Alright, uh, this is Maglin from Voron Design coming at you with a quick clipper video of bed mesh. Um, how to save a bed mesh, how to call one up, um, and all that stuff. So, uh, let's just hop right into it and uh, hopefully I can cover the majority of the questions that people constantly ask about how do I use bed mesh. So, uh, we have, well, of course, your actual bed mesh section in your printer config. So. I am logged into my Pi right now, but I'm going to go ahead and just re-log in real fast. So, I'm in my Pi. I'm using the NPP FTP uh, plugin. Uh, here's my printer config, which is right here, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure I got the most current one. Uh, it, with the latest thing, it, uh, with the latest update, it, it says that no matter what. But I always hit OK because I want to make sure I'm in the right one. All right. And let's go to our bed mesh. I was just there. Well, we're at the probe. So this is my current probe section. Um, I've tried a few different things. Uh, I actually have come down to uh, uh, running running my probe at 50 millimeters a second uh, single sample. Um, I don't have any problems uh, with that. So yep. And then I have the probe move five millimeters uh, between samples. Not that I'm using it anymore. So we're gonna go to our bed mesh section. Do do do. You are. Yeah. So this is what I. These are the values that I use for my bed mesh. Um, 100 millimeters a second in between probing moves. I'm running a five by five grid. I like to use five by five. I like to use odd numbers. So you'd want to use three by three, five by five, seven point seven, uh, nine by nine. Um, that's only because one value will always be the dead center of your bed. Uh, so for my allowable points, um, you gotta remember this is based on the nozzle, not the uh, not the probe, uh, unless things have changed, which I don't think they have. Um, so I have this set for my mins and my max to basically be where the probe is going to be 25 millimeters um, from e from any edge. Yeah, yeah, because at 200 of my nozzle on the Y, I'm at 225 uh, with the probe. So, um, 10 millimeters of fade. Uh, I don't remember what split delta Z is for. Uh, it's probably at default right now. Uh, I, I mess with a lot of things, and when I put them back to default, I usually don't take them out of my config. Um, I know this is default. Lagrange is default. Um, and this is the big thing right here is relative reference index. Uh, we're using number 12, which should be the point directly in the center of my bed with a 5x5 grid. Um, there's ways you could figure that out, uh, but basically you just count from left to right. I have five points, so it would be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then 11, 12, 13. Oh, I believe 0 is the first point, and that's why I'm on 12. Uh, I bounce back and forth. I don't know if it matters all that much. Anyway, that's something to ask uh, the guy that made the bed mesh. I I might have. He's he's in he's in Voron. He's in the Voron GitHub or the uh, Discord. Anyway, this is my bed mesh section. Easy peasy. Uh, some things we're gonna need to do uh, when messing with bed mesh is, uh, and supposedly we don't need to do this, but I like to play it safe. I'm going to go to my homing override section, and we need to put in a bed mesh clear before we really do anything when it comes to homing. So really the first thing I'm doing is my bed mesh clear before I do any moves. That way, supposedly it's not being factored in. I know for a fact it's not because it's clearing any mesh that might be saved. Um, and then in our print start, uh, we're going to add a bed mesh profile here in the future. So let's get to the actual bed mesh portion. So let's go over here. Uh, this is my Octoprint. Um, let's see what commands are available. I can just type in help and then it'll show all the commands that we have available. Basically anything that I have set in my config. Uh, if there's a help section with with commands, it'll come here. Um, we only need a couple. We're going to be using bed mesh calibrate and we're going to be using bed mesh profile. That's basically it. Um, if you want to be able to view your bed meshes, uh, you can use the bed visualizer here to show your mesh. 
Um, and there are things that I do uh, with my meshes sometimes to try to fix some things because this is what we're doing is I'm taking an inductor probe and I'm probing the aluminum bed. Uh, what I'm not doing is I'm not probing the top of the build layer um, and there's we got a sheet of PEI that's not going to be exactly flat on both ends or be, have the exact same thickness all the way through and then we're going to have a, a sheet of uh, a pressure sensitive adhesive that's in between that and the, and the aluminum bed. So um, what we're probing is the bed. Uh, we're probing the aluminum. We're not probing the PEI. So if, if you need to make adjustments, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm not going to go through that in great detail, but I'll just give you a, a little heads up, uh, a little bit of, of kind of what it looks like. Right now, I don't have any mesh. See, that in my config over here, um, there is no uh, big commented out uh, save config section because I recently deleted it. And I can't pull up a new mesh right now. But with the bed visualizer, uh, if we come over here um, to its settings, all you need to put in here is bed mesh output. Easy as that. Uh, I have mine saved. I think that's default. I don't remember. Uh, here's the data from my last bed mesh that I pulled up. Uh, pretty simple, though. That's all you need. Bed mesh output. Uh, I don't think I did anything else. Uh, well, hold on. Maybe I did. So I have a terminal command for that. Right? So... No, I don't. Nope. I just got my bed mesh calibrate button. And then I used to have a cold mesh. Um, now I only have a hot mesh. I don't know why I made a cold mesh. I'm going to get rid of that. <sighs> okay. So, go into our terminal. Bed mesh calibrate is going to be the thing that we want to run. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Oh, my bed has been heated up for quite a while. Uh, it looks like uh, I started about 21 minutes ago, uh, probably about 18 minutes ago, uh, 16, 17 minutes ago. It reached temperature at the thermistor. It takes about five full minutes for the top of my bed to reach uh, the desired temperature that I have plugged in. Um, I use 90 degrees Celsius for my ABS. used to use 100 for the longest time, but I found I don't need it at that anymore. So anyway, we're going to run a bed mesh calibrate. This is going to take a few minutes if I home my axis first. So let's do that first. So all my home and level button does there is uh, it runs a uh, G28. Oh, I can, I can show you. We've got some time. It's going to take about a few seconds for that to finish. Terminal commands. So here's my, yeah, G28 and a G32. Easy as that. Just about finished. All right, now we can do the bed mesh calibrate. And it's starting. While it is doing that, I will pull up Clipper. All right. And show you how to kind of learn how to do some of the stuff on your own. Um, a lot of the stuff really can be figured out just by going to gcodes.md, the, the gcode commands that are available in Clipper. Um, we are doing bed mesh, so let's go to our bed mesh section. And we are done with our mesh. So here is all the commands for bed mesh, right? We'll just stick that over here. How about I use my window keys? There you go. All right. So... We want to let's look at what that what that ended up looking like. So let's go to our bed visualizer here, hit the old update button, and that is how it came out. So you can see here on the right, um, these are sections of my bed that are not being probed. So that's why it, you always see this curl up at the end. It's just the way the mathematical computation, the way it works. Um, but from my lowest points, and if you look here, you can see that it shows you kind of the island that is uh, at that point. And it's mainly it's going through all the different probe points. Um, my bed is mostly flat here in the center. But when, as you get here on these edges, uh, it, it starts to curl up a little bit. Um, wow. That's actually uh, used to be 0.2. Now I'm looking at 0.08. Um, for my deviation, that's not bad at all. 
and really I could print full plate with it like this and uh, not worry about it. Uh, my first layer would be a little squished on the corners. And 99% of my printing, and eh, 95% is done in, within probably the 80% of the bed. I mean, almost nobody uses their entire bed except for a handful of people. I use mine sometimes, um, but I actually like to pull it in a couple 10 millimeters around the edge. Uh, only time I really use is when I have one large part. Usually I'm doing a big plate of things. Anyway, um, what we need here is we need to make, we need to save this as our profile. So I'm just going to copy that. We'll go back to the terminal here. We'll paste that in. We're not loading a mesh, so let's get rid of that. And I want to save this as hot. So bed mesh state has been saved to the profile hot for the current session. The save config command will update the printer config file. Oh, so it looks like I'm, I have to... Yep, so we have to do a save config because it did not save it. So let's do a save config. How about I spell that correctly the third time? All right. Oh, that's I haven't yet I haven't used save config in so long, so now it actually does a reset for you. So that way your config is saved and it's updated in your current instance of Clipper. So now when I pull this in, there's my bed mesh. So it automatically makes a default. I'm not a big fan of that, but just leave it alone. And then here is my mesh for my hot plate. I have to go ahead and turn the temperature back on just in case I need to do something. And we'll go ahead and do a level. All right. So now we can see inside here, uh, the very bottom of my config, I got bed mesh default. I got bed mesh hot. Um, I saved it as hot. So now... I can come up here to my print start, and we can add the bed mesh profile load equals hot. And we're able to see that from right here. Bed mesh profile, we have load, we have save, and you have remove. So you can actually remove them. Uh, I just do it manually. I, I'm, I'm in my config. It seems like all the dang time. Um, bed mesh clear is another command I, I, I use. Like I said, I put that in the uh, uh, homing override. And that's really all there is to it um, since it's in my print start uh, right here right now the default is loaded which is the same mesh so really it doesn't matter but maybe I don't want a default mesh there's other reasons for having it but I, I, I made a cold one and a hot one um, testing and I was able to show the difference between the two because um, there is a difference um, that the bed moves a decent amount. When I say a decent amount, we're talking, you know, uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, sometimes 0 0.05 uh, millimeters. Um, it's not enough to make a print usually go bad or fail, but it is enough to create issues. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and then since I'm here, uh, how long is this already? Uh, we're already at... Uh, 13 minutes. So I'm going to give you a quick two minute, make this 15. I'm going to show you my G32. So I'm sorry, my quad gantry level. So I am using retry, retry tolerance, um, 0 0.005. That's two steps. Uh, my probe is accurate to uh, within plus or minus one step. And I allow my retry tolerances to be uh, two steps. Um, Maximum amount of adjustment is 8 millimeters. Um, if I really pull my gantry out of square, uh, it, it, it might yell at me that it's not enough. Um, but the biggest thing is, is when you're first setting up your printer, um, the max adjust is going to stop you from breaking your gantry. Because uh, if it's adjusting and you have two steppers or one stepper going the wrong direction, it's going to continue to adjust and the error is going to get larger and larger and larger until it breaks your gantry. Uh, this is going to stop that from happening. Um, and I allow 10 retries. Uh, generally, I see two, uh, like, like here, sometimes three. Um, if I do work and I actually touch my gantry, sometimes I'll see three, four, or five. Um, you think you would be able to probe once or twice and get there, uh, but I'm, we're measuring things with our eyeballs and whatnot, and uh, I'm sure the math is sound, 
uh, but my measuring is probably not, so that's probably why it takes a little while to sneak up on there. Um, there is no reason, though, to go below uh, 0 0.005. Like, it, you can see here that my probe tolerance range is one step right now. So, yeah, I'm pretty good. I actually have tested just one step, and a lot of times um, it'll bounce back and forth. Uh, you'll see a negative, to, you know, on step or two here on Z2. You'll see a negative point whatever, and then the next time you'll see positive point, you know, almost the same value. It just keeps going back and forth. Um, and that's just the, the problems with doing measurements by eye, and, and then the math is solid, but, you know, we're, we're, our measuring devices are not for measuring where our belts are located. Um, and really, it's about where the pivot point is. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that play into it. So with that, um, I just wanted to show you the quad gantry level retries as well, because uh, some people might not be using it. Uh, FYI, I have a 250, 250-millimeter uh, build space. Uh, V2, so all my stuff is for my 250. Um, trying to think of anything that uh, I, I might have missed. Uh, print end, we don't need anything there. So yeah, uh, that's how simple it is to use bed mesh. And if you want to, you know, if you come, uh, like what I just recently did, uh, I was like, I don't want to use my bed mesh. You don't need to delete anything. You don't need to do anything but come in here and in your print start macro, just comment out your bed mesh. Simple as that. And it'll, it'll, next time you start a print, it's not going to load that. And since in our G32, we put a bed mesh clear in there, there's no bed mesh. It, it already cleared it when we did the Congantry level. When you initially start up Clipper, it's going to load the default mesh. When I, when I level my gantry, it's going to get rid of that mesh. So until I load a mesh, there is no mesh. So me having that default mesh really doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, that is all for this one. Uh, if you guys got any questions, I would say leave a comment, but I never check them. So, yeah, uh, get, hit me up on Discord. Um, maybe I'll answer you. You all take, take it easy.